Hi there and uh, welcome. Today I am going to be reviewing Trello uh, and how I use it, how I've used it in the past and what works, what doesn't for me. Um, I hope this is helpful for you and gives you a, a few tips and tricks to help your business move forward. Um, so we'll go ahead and hop in and we'll view what I do and then we will go through how to set up your own. Okay, let's dive in. I'll run through this really quickly for those that are maybe comfortable with Trello and just kind of want to see a, a different way of using it. Um, and for those that would like to see what it might look like at the end for you, um, these are a lot of transactions going on. So um, we'll just go through really quick on how I use it. Um, my green is for listings, blue is for buyers, um, and these are the covers. So you can change the cover to whatever color you want. Uh, I just like to see which ones are listings and which ones are buying. Um, so in these cards, there are different lists for um, each one, and I use it through the timeline. So earnest money is usually due first, then due diligence, appraisal financial contingency, pending, closing next week, October closings, and September closings. We're early on in October, so I am going to go ahead and move this to our closed deals board. And um, that's that about the lists. Now the cards, I use um, the addresses to um, tell which card it is. Um, P, Y, you'll see these initials at the very beginning. That's who the deal belongs to. Uh, this is a team of five. So this is for uh, just so that I know whose deal it is. Um, and then within the card, I will go ahead and do a template. Um, the description part, I've put the due dates because I do want to have easy access to that when I'm moving from one side to another. So for example, this card here, um, I am pending response, which I will go into the labels in just a second, um, but I did receive a response for this. So I would change this date. We're good to go on appraisal financial contingency. So I would change it to the closing date. Let's just say it is the 20th of October. So I'd change it to the 20th of October, and then I'd move it simply by clicking and dragging to pending. Um, and then I'm going to put it in chronological order so that I have the more recent things at the top. And then now that I have moved it over, uh, the pending response. So these labels are super helpful as well. Um, you'll see here, uh, it, it'll be clear to close. I'll put that. If there's action required by me, I'll make it yellow. If I'm pending for someone's response, uh, just like, you know, I was waiting for the lender to give me the okay that we are um, on track to close, uh, that'll be pending response. And a waiting action would be waiting for, let's say, for this buying um, transaction. I am waiting for the agent to uh, send the termite inspection report. So I would put a waiting um, action from the other side. Uh, so that's how I use the labels. And um, it basically, you just go through the transaction this way, keep the ones that happen soonest on top. Um, and uh, yeah, keep it going that way. Let me see if there's anything else that I can touch on that might be helpful um, for anyone that's using it. So the dates, let's look here. Oh yeah, the checklists are pretty amazing. Uh, you can have different checklists for each one. Um, so I have a checklist for each one of my lists. Earnest Money Due, this is at the very beginning of the transaction. This is everything that I have to do before the earnest money deposit is submitted. Um, and then send to all parties. Once I'm done with this one, I'll scroll it all the way to the bottom, get it out of our way. And then I have my next set. Once the due diligence, uh, once we have survived due diligence, this would be the list, you know, send it to everyone. And then I'd continue on with the appraisal financial contingency period as well, because this has those tasks that I can complete 
easily and keep track of what I'm doing. So um, I'll continue that uh, once we do get the amendment to address concerns or any special stipulations, I will add it to its own folder here so that I can check off as I'm going through. I've received everything I need to. You can also hide completed items or show them. Um, so that's that. And then a week before closing, I get done with all of that. So as I'm moving through this and as I'm completing things, I'm just going ahead and clicking, dragging everything to the bottom so that when I do come into the transaction that I'm working on, it's right at the top where I can start working. I don't have to go digging for where I'm supposed to be, what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and that is it for the basics. Um, and I will go ahead and dive into how to set up your own, how to get that started. Let's go. We are now setting up our own Trello. So you are going to want to sign up again. It's free, which is amazing because you can do so much within this. It, it's kind of mind blowing that they offer this like this, but, um, yes, there's that. So you'll go ahead and create your first board. It'll look like this. You'll name it, whatever you want. If it's just you as an agent, you know, as an individual agent, you can just name it transaction management or the key team. So this is my training master. Uh, you'll name the board. And then the first thing you're going to want to do is add your lists. So I've added the earnest money due list. And we'll go ahead and keep adding these. All right, now that we've got all of our lists, we'll want to start with our template. So I've already created one here, but I'll go step by step on how you'd like to, uh, you would probably want to do it. Um, and let's go into our buying one. You can change the cover to whatever color you'd like it to be. I just figured B, buying, blue, it all made sense. Um, and then you will do your description binding date. So if you want to pause here and go ahead and fill that in, it's a good time. All right. Now the earnest money due and the rest of the uh, checklists, you will want to create your own process for it. Um, everyone's different. Every state's different. I don't know where you're watching from, um, but you can get some ideas from my website, mlhtransactions.com slash TC. This kind of breaks down everything that I offer to them. So if you need some, some ideas on what you can put in your, your specific lists, feel free to uh, use that there. So you will create the checklist by clicking this. AMD, I'm just going to write that, add. And then you will add team sheet, intros, there's money deposit, to all parties, whatever you want to put. So I'm going to delete this because I've already got one working. So you can go ahead and uh, once you've gotten at least all of your checklists, so let's just do earnest money due due diligence ends, appraisal financial contingency period, special stipulations and uh, amendment to address concern items, closing, terminated, and that's it. So you can go ahead and start those and then you can add your checklist items um, when you have your big list together. So next, You'll want to go all the way down and in activities, I usually do this because I want to be able to have all of their contact information in one place. So I'll add this as an activity and it'll always stay at the bottom. So for your template, you will want to save the seller's names, buyer's names, co-op's name, lender name, attorney name. I also put, you know, I'll put their name phone, email for each and every one of them. 
So once you save that, it will stay at the very bottom and any other activity. I, I never use this outside of um, having the contact information for all parties there, um, but you can add whatever you want, but just know that if you scroll all the way down, you will be able to get your uh, contact information for anyone that you're, you're dealing with on the transaction. So um, I will go ahead and make this a template now. And it's a template, as easy as that. So now that we've got this, actually, I want to add this cover. Let's go ahead and do the blue for buying. So we've got that template set up. Now you might want to go ahead and set up your labels, the green label, clear to close, yellow, action required, orange, pending response, and the red, waiting action. Let's delete this one. We don't need two red ones. Okay, perfect. So now you've got your labels and this will carry on. So now that you've got your buying one and that red label clicked, let's get out of there. Now that you've got your buying one, you can go ahead and fill in your checklist and then you will create card from template. Name it the same thing. Create card. Now let's change this to green for listings. And now you've got this template for your listings. Make it a template as well. And I always keep, oops, archive that. I always keep my templates and earnest money due at the very bottom so that when I am ready, I can just right click and copy, add the address. and create card. That's my new address. I can go in, plug in all of my dates, save, and get started on my checklist. Um, and that's pretty much the setup part with this. Um, if you are working with outside people, other agents, uh, you can invite them. This is also free and it's going to, you're going to add to a team. Choose a team, you can create a team. So training team and then team type small business um, so now you have a team you can invite people to view and i think the paid version is where they can actually interact um, but you'll add their email um, or their name uh, whatever it is you can create an invite link uh, to send it directly to them that way so it's super easy to use when you have other people looking at what you're doing as well. They can come in, check where you are on each transaction. They can come in and check on your dates. Uh, like I showed you, you know, previously it is pretty, I mean, it's, it's easy to use, easy to kind of understand. Um, some bonus things with these, you can add attachments as well. Also, there are um, power-ups, which they have a bunch of different ones that you can choose from. I prefer the calendar one because that way I can have everything in a calendar uh, that I can look at just really quick. And um, also if you go to home, you can also go to home here. You've got all of your tasks all amongst all of the boards. Um, so if you are working with uh, different teams or working with um, different agents as well, you can have all of those tasks be on this one timeline and you can go through there. So I think that is it for the starting part. And really, I mean, you've seen it's pretty easy to get together. Um, and it's pretty easy uh, to, to look at as well and go through. Create your own little system with it. This is what's 
worked for me. This is definitely a huge game changer for me. Um, if it weren't for Trello, I'm not sure where I'd be. <laughs> I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, suggestions. I'm always open to, to learning more and being even more efficient and productive. So uh, yeah, thanks for sharing these last 10, 15 minutes with me and looking forward to hearing some feedback.